Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Yeah, y'all. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you to all of our listeners around the world and around this great country of ours. Welcome to another edition of Focus with Ron Frierson. I am your host, Mr. Ron Frierson. To my left, I have my co-host, Mr. Woody Wilson. What's up, Ron? Happy Friday. Happy Friday, brother. Now, if you guys may have noticed that the music that I usually um, play before we begin the program, it had to be omitted because I guess my, one of my favorite alternative groups of all time, Radiohead, I guess they don't like the fact that we're using their music. Copyright infringements. Inter- yeah. It's copyright infringement. So either we need to find um, a, a new song or maybe one of you listeners. Songwriters out there could submit some one stuff. One of you listeners, if you guys are musically inclined, um, send me some samples of what you think a good um, intro song should be for an, an original track. Uh, what uh, what we can use on the show as our intro song, and I will constantly give you a shout out if your song is chosen. Yeah, if that'd you be hot to enter that song. The key um, is musically to, inclined, not declined. <laughs> what you do is go to Ronnie at gmail dot com and put in the subject uh, line uh, "focus intro," and then just go ahead and send me a file. Let me know what your what your music sounds like, and maybe we'll use your song as our new intro. Now, everyone that knows me, uh, of course, my number one music fan, I'm gonna, my number one Prince, artist huh? is Prince. Yeah. But I love Radiohead. I'm a big Radiohead fan, and so I was a little bit disappointed that we weren't able to use their song in the intro. But these things happen. So send and, us an original. Yeah, so send us something, and we'll, and we'll use it. So, again, thank you to all of our fans across the globe for tuning in for another show. We really appreciate your time. We appreciate you starting your first uh, w- your weekend with us. So... Well, we're going to start off today. Um, we so much stuff to choose from, yeah, especially on a political a lot going front. On. So we're going to just go for something that's a little bit offbeat, and then we're going to cover the things that you do expect us to cover, and the things that we try to educate you on. And and remember, you guys can always call in and give us your thoughts and your questions at area code three two three eight four three two eight two six. Again, three two three eight four three two eight two six. Also, we stream live on Facebook. We uh, we have a YouTube channel. We're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. Yeah, you can hear me anytime. Hear me and my man Woody anytime. That's right. Um, and by these uh, different means. So anyway, so I want to go first into um, what happened during the Olympics. Go uh, ahead, man. I haven't really watched the Olympics as much as I have in the past. It's just life. You got so much stuff going on. So I try to catch things from time to time. But it seems like more than any of the gold medals, more than, you know, even more than the pollution and all the stuff that they talk about re- uh, talk about um, during these games. The uh, dirty water. In, in Rio, yeah. yeah. I've heard about Ryan Lochte and the oh, United man. States Olympics. What a team. goof he made. Yeah, I guess it was a bunch of them. I, I, you know, they're all they're young guys. I, I guess that, but Ryan Lochte's like thirty one, thirty two. So yeah, he's he a leader of the better. pack. So if we were talking about college age kids, then maybe I can understand. You know, sometimes when you're in college, you do stupid things. But as a thirty year old man, if you go to another country and you get yourself in some trouble and then you fabricate a story, I mean, something as serious as being you know, held by at gunpoint and getting robbed by. Imposters of the police department. By impo- that's a pretty that's, elaborate story. That's an elaborate story, and, and he had, should, if, had he not gone there, yeah, he would be okay. Yeah, well, had he not just publicized it and tried to become the victim, I don't see why he would do that. I mean, obviously he had his own motivations, and the whole team went along with it. It's just one of those things that I I lived in other countries before, and I've always said it, and it, it really, I think it really helped my character. And living in these different places, having lived in Australia and having lived in France, you can see um, when you're immersed in another culture, you can see how they look at Americans, how we are viewed from uh, outside looking in, the good and the bad. You can see it. 
and there is we call swag but there's a, a, a sense of uh maybe an arrogance when americans are abroad some of us yeah some of us not all of us but um in many other countries they can sense that as well yeah and then in other countries what you learn is that everyone is as patriotic and loves their country just as much as, as you, you love do. yours. That's right. So how we say that we are the indispensable nation, how we are, uh, you know, we believe in American exceptionalism. Well, if you live in these other countries, they feel the same way yeah. about themselves. Yeah. And if you think about that. And you can't break their laws just because you're from another true. country. But, but you know, that goes to a, a, a deeper thing. If, if everyone in their country believes uh, and they're, you know, if they're as patriotic as we are, uh-huh. and they think that their country is exceptional, uh, the same way we think ours is exceptional. If you go into these situations knowing that these other places have pride, then that will help you better understand the people. It better, it'll help you better understand the culture. But if you go into any sort of, you know, international talks, and you automatically think that, you know, whatever I say is it. And well, you're wrong. You don't have it. It's a sort of ethnocentrism, yeah, that needs to, you know, really be identified. But above that, but but above all of that, I mean, you know, your mother used to say to you, you know, when you're a young child, or to me at least, you know, act like you've been somewhere before. Mm-hmm. You know, they haven't been. They have obviously they haven't traveled. Yeah. Um, I mean, just they just they were disrespectful, um, and uh, they acted like uh, a bunch of spoiled young men from america and uh yeah whatever they've got coming to them they deserve it well you know i guess the the, the long and short of it is that i wanted to bring that back to politics and our foreign policy and and that's just a microcosm of the way many of us uh feel um americans feel like we are i just put it like this if you lived in france and which i was there for a while yeah they want you to speak French the same way as when you're in America in the United States. They want you States, to speak English. They want you to speak English. So other countries have the same sense of patriotism that we have here. So whenever we deal with other countries on a uh, in a diplomatic setting, we need to understand that because it's easier to to get our point across and to have countries see things the way we we need for them to see things in order to you know meet some agenda to 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 uh, establish some goals to keep peace you right. have to go into any place you think about with respect so with iran this is the major reason i brought this up okay with the iran deal yeah you know we're our culture and our our and our media and everything yeah. we have grown up to think of iran as you know hell on earth like it's just terrible and, and, and everything is going on with the, the the country and government is terrible the enemy same of the way, united states yeah same way is and they are taught the same thing in many respects about, about us not the people because the public um the youth especially have so many uh, relationships with the youth here and you know and the people are different but the government yeah i think we distinguish different. between the people and the government here in exactly. the united states versus the other way around i think they look at all of the united states as as, uh, you know, I don't evil. think that's the same in Iran. I think in Iran, the, the, the you know, which the vast majority of the of the population is under the age of thirty five, I believe, and they wow. are very Western friendly. But the people that hold the power, in the power structure, they are anti American, and and that's what really matters at this point is because they hold the power. And you're probably right. That's why so many want to come to the U S. Yeah, and the same thing with the uh, with Russia. You know, we grew up, you know, in the Cold War, and we thought everything was evil in the Soviet Empire. Right. And then the things that happen now. So. I guess the long and short of it is this, is that whenever we deal with another country and another culture, we need to understand that they have as much pride of their country and culture as we have in ours. Absolutely. And so when we have you know, certain presidential candidates that speak as if the world's not listening or- Are you talking about that, Trump? Yeah. yeah. Or has a, a flat out disrespectful, non-negotiable, no diplomatic skills whatsoever in dealing with foreign governments, that's not going to help us get to where we need to be. No, it's going to hinder us. Yeah, it's going to put us in reverse. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That's just my little thought on that specific Well, speaking thing. of Trump, you know, he's yeah. trying to look a little bit more presidential now. He's speaking from teleprompters, which he uh, said he'd never do. 
Um, yeah. And but you know he it's too too little too late. You know they're trying to hit television a little bit mm-hmm. and uh, go against Hillary. Yeah. What, what do you think about that? Do you think he's uh, making some forward progress? You know, um, I think it was yesterday that he fired his, uh, and he, they say he resigned, but in essence he was fired. Right. Fired his uh, campaign manager, Paul Manafort. Yeah, he got demoted and, first. Yeah, yeah. And, and I forget the young lady's name, uh, Kelly, some, I want to say her name is Kelly. Um, well, she's the new, um, Jarvis, could you get the name of the new, of um, uh, uh, Donald Trump's, new campaign manager uh i want to say her name is uh, kelly something well anyway long long story short of it is that she's got him on on message on task as a matter of fact well some of the stuff that he was saying over the last two days if he had been saying this stuff throughout his campaign he would be doing it would be a lot tighter in the polls yeah i would never vote for him right but it's more focused it's, um, it's more focused, but it's still wide open for interpretation. Like there's just there's still not a plan behind it, but just a bunch of Google got. No, but the stuff he's saying makes sense, and people can identify with it. Remember, I mean, that's the thing. Like what? What? What, what part of it made sense? And it's, it's okay. One sense. of the things that he pointed out, which is true, he was saying how in our inner cities and in our the community in the inner cities, we've been voting Democrat for so long, largely oh, yeah, due yeah, to yeah. largely due to the civil rights era. Yeah. But he said. Have they gotten better in inner cities? Do you still have crime in the inner cities? Do you still have poverty in inner cities? Right. Has it really, you know, has to, have the Democrats, have the Democrats really done what they say? Have they eliminated poverty? Yeah. Have they done this? Have they done that? And no, they haven't. And it's true. No, well, they, they ha- their still, hands are tied, you know. Uh, um, that's not true. I mean, at the local level, the hands are tied. If you're in a Democratic city like um, Chicago or Detroit or Baltimore where Den- Democrats really, um, okay, got it. Kelly, uh, Kelly Lynn Conway, Kelly, Kelly Lynn Conway. Conway yeah. yeah. So when you're in a democratically controlled city and these things are going on, I can see how, like, yeah. Do you think it would be in the reverse if Republicans were? Uh, that's the key, and that's one of the things he said. You know, he said, I, "I don't think this so. Is I think they said. don't care." So no, this is what he said, and this is the thing that. But I he did make a good point. That did my eyebrows did raise when he made that. Yeah, point. he I made like, that hmm, point, and then, and he said. They haven't done what this. He said, "Why not try something new?" Yeah. He said, "What do you What do you have to lose?" That's exactly what he said. He said, yeah. "What do you have to lose?" He said, "The Democrats in these cities where Democrats have been in control for all these years, you still have a lot of um, uh, crime. You still have all this poverty. And as a matter of fact, it's getting worse in many areas. But it's not a government fix anyway, away. and we know that it's not a government fix. Well, to a certain extent. Well, if it's not a government fix." then it wouldn't matter who we voted for. Well, yeah, in a sense. I yeah. mean, where there's still programs on a larger scale that, that are needed. Uh, but, but the which fix is has what to the government, come. Which is, which is what the government has to do if, they're, if these certain programs. Right. But, but, at the but it's a grassroots of, fix that needs to happen. Well, it's the, the, single parent homes. But, you know, we could, okay, so, I mean, it's so systemic. I mean, it's, it's so, all right, so, and this is kind of going to get, because I talk about single family homes because black men are in jail because of, you know, how they're treated and, and cops targeting them and, mm-hmm. and all of those things. And, and and so that kind of that circle of uh, that cycle of single mm-hmm. parent homes and not having a father to raise a son and that cycle continues and that creates poverty in most situations. Um, so it really is a grassroots and government can't stop step in and stop that. But the Democrats or whatever parties in office can certainly change you know, so that go that folks from being that targeted. boosts my point. So yeah. the point is this: is that, and I want the Democrats to to listen to this and really hold our elected officials accountable, because it's true, and it rang it rang with you and it rang with me because it is true. In many of these cities, in some of the most crime ridden cities and the most poverty stricken cities, they are democratic, uh, democratically run, right. with a small d, um, <laughs> uh, cities where you have uh, you know, a Democratic mayor or you have a city council that's made up largely of, of Democrats and things of that sort. But yet and still, we have all of these issues. And what happens lots of times is that one one side of government will blame the other. So it may be a Democrat that's blaming someone in the federal government for not working or someone at the federal level blaming the local. But everyone knows that police officers are elected at a local level. Right. The, um, the, the, the county elected. clerks, the county judge, all this stuff is all local stuff. And if right. they're all Democrats and you still have all this poverty and all this stuff going on, then that makes you wonder. It makes you think, like, wow, 
you know, maybe he may be on to something right there. Now, the thing about it is this, is that he changed what he said based on the teleprompter's words changing because he has a new campaign manager and they put something new in his teleprompter. So he was just reading off of it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, we're going to start to our format is going to not really change, but we're going to improve it because we're getting a lot more sponsors in and we have a lot more things we need to say yes. in the course of the program. So the first thing I want to bring up is Nanobright. So Nanobright, our not new sponsor. to sound arrogant or conceited, but uh, I've been getting a lot of compliments on my skin. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with Nanobright. Oh, now, I, I see. do have some words I want to say about it, that these words are very, very complex. And I know okay. that our listeners are very, you know, Get ready, knowledgeable folks. and astute. So I'm going to read a little bit about Nanobright. Nice. I'm pulling it up right now. Nanobright. So, okay. So, um, Nanobright has this ACP complex. This provides super nutrition and conditioning organic oils to the skin. The highly, this is too much scientific. So let me tell you about it. Talk about how your skin is gleaming. It's exactly. It's great for your skin, and basically what it does, it infuses vitamins and essential oils and organic ingredients, and 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 it's um, some microfine particles so that it penetrates the skin and it helps heal aging skin. I swear it it works. Sun damaged. Aging skin, especially people with hyperpigmentation, which a lot of people of color get. If yeah. you get scarred, it'll get dark right there. This stuff helps eliminate all of that. Right. There's no irritants in it. Because you're like There's 70 no, years old. Right? I know. There's no bleaching or anything like that. It's nothing that's toxic in it whatsoever. It just helps your new skin once it comes to the fore. It'll be even and supple. It'll be nice. So look for Nanobrite. It's going to be on the shelves of Sephora within the next six to six months to a year. Oh, it's going to be a Sephora. Can, huh? It's going to be a Sephora. But you can go to nanobright.com and get it. And if you use the code word SKIN, S-K-I-N, code word SKIN, you can get a, I want to say a 10% discount. You can get it wow. for like 20 bucks as opposed to, to 30 bucks. And it works like for that. men and women. Yes, I guess that would be 33% discount. If you think no, about it. No. You'll get 10, 10 bucks, bucks off. Oh, 10 bucks off. Okay. Go ahead and get it. Get Nanobright. So let's get back to it. So um, the thing about Trump is the fact that he um, – He's an idiot. He's an idiot, but he – you don't get as far as he got on in, in the business world being a complete I think idiot. I'd be a better candidate than Trump. Tell me about that. I, I, I mean, obviously. I mean, I, I know how to act presidential. I mean, if, yeah. if, that's, if that's whatever – that's the buzzword everyone's sticking to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I know what to say and what not to say. You know, mm-hmm. I know how to not offend people, but mm-hmm. keep everyone inclusive. You know, it's it's kind of those are the basics for running for the highest office in the land. You would think, you know, and Trump doesn't understand that. And so, I mean, I really think I could do a better job than, than Donald Trump. You know, maybe I wouldn't get as much TV time, but, you know, he's getting a lot of free free TV time. You know, maybe that's the key. Maybe the fact that he is getting so much TV time because of his his presence because of his celebrity and he's been in the public eye for years so he has a level of of familiarity and we know that's what it is because there's no way i mean the scale in which we judge this presidential race Mm -hmm. has been lowered to to a level to where we're judging the way he reads a teleprompter and what he says about his 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 words or his speech that has been set up and written for him mm-hmm. and we're starting to grade him based on that alone not the not the substance not the policy mm-hmm. not the plan you know not the things that we typically judge a president mm-hmm. by or, or potential uh, uh, nominee uh, and so so the, the scale is so much lower now and we're kind of all falling into this it's it's the norm for you know, everyone in the media to talk about how well he does these little simple things as opposed to his policies and what's most what important is, to America. You have, a, you have a point there, but I also think what it is, is I think it's the fact that it's not so much that um, he um, uh, knows what he's talking about. It's that the shock value that comes along with him, he's entertaining. But now it's to a point, you, you tr- it's true, he's set the bar so low that yeah. now since he's speaking with some sort of sense – it seems like a vast improvement. Yeah, but, but he's not doing it well. You know that's, he's uh, no, reading. He's do, no, yeah, that's the thing. It's like he's already shown you what's in his heart 
now because he's reading something different that someone else typed for him on a teleprompter. Now, now he wants think, to apologize. Now you think that's going to change the things that he said? That makes no sense. And I, no. and I don't like that. I wish they would have all politicians have to get rid of teleprompters. Get rid of them. Well, I mean, because there's a lot of information to, to, to retain. Well, I mean, no, you, but you still, no, no. Well, let them do that for the debate. It can't all be Obama, you know. Can't, yeah, that well, brilliant. But President Obama, yeah, but he's brilliant with the teleprompter. He's brilliant well. with the teleprompter, yeah. Yeah, but the point is this, is that if you take the teleprompter away, now, because none of them get into the very specifics of policy. Well, that's what the debates is about. Exactly. So let them do that in the debates where they have their notes and stuff. But when they speak about their vision for America, they need to speak for their from their hearts. They need to speak about, you know, speak from their souls and speak to the people and communicate with the people. But... If you go up there and all you speak about, all you, you know, rant out is platitudes and things that have been poll tested. Ooh, platitudes, I like that word. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. You know, things Science. that have been poll tested that this audience will respond to this, so say this. And some campaign consultant has told you and speechwriters have put into this this document, these are the things you, were, you should say. This is your speech. Well, that's politics, Read smoking mirrors. This. But that's the problem. Yeah. But, you know, the the debate, that's why I said the debate will really reveal what's in their heart and Mm -hmm. how they can answer questions. You know, I'm really looking forward to Donald Trump in the debate against Hillary Clinton. I know she's got her canned answers, right? She's a career politician. She'll do well. You know, everyone's expecting her to do okay. But can Donald Trump stand on the same stage and talk policy and be cool and, and, and be presidential? And I would say what's, and not attack. Yeah, and I would say what is because I mean if we really think about it, we if you think about it, really think about it, we yeah. like and let's say we I mean like the American public accepts being lied to. We know that hmm. this is a farce. We know that based on the stuff he said when he was off script and he just spoke free flowing. Well, that's deep now, what you said. We it, accept being yeah, lied accept, to because Hillary I mean, Clinton accept, lied about those emails. Yeah. You know. But we we accept being lied to when the candidate will say in the in the primary, Democrats go further to the left, Republicans go further to the right so they can solidify their base. So they purposely go out and tell the far left or far right in their parties as much as they can to galvanize them, to get their support. And then if they win, they get to the general election, and then they start to uh, um, become a little more moderate to try to appeal to the masses. So those people in the primaries know that they're being lied to, and then during the general, this person is going to pivot and try to look towards the general election and and try to moderate. So that means that we know, we're saying, and especially in the primary season, come and lie to me. Come and tell me some stuff. Lie to me. Well, I think then, that's why Trump is so popular right now, because mm-hmm. everyone's tired of it. I mean, we're all, yeah. I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton is a lesser of two evils, a lot of people would say. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't think so much as t- to say that or to category, you know, throw in that category. category. But mm-hmm. what I do, you know, I, I want people, I mean, my point of view with Hillary is that, listen, folks, she's dedicated 40 years of her life to public service. Mm-hmm. Uh, she made some ex- mistakes with the email. She wasn't the only one. Colin Powell had done the same thing, private mm-hmm. servers. Uh, so th- it, she lied about it, you know, to try to cover it up. I guess I understand uh, that was a mistake, but uh, you can't throw her under the bus because she made a mistake. You know, everyone's going to make a mistake. And, and uh, every politician does. And, it, you know, if you think they're not going to make a mistake, you're, you're sadly mistaken. Well, I actually don't really, I don't give her, really give her a pass for it because well, it's not that, a pass. It's yeah. definitely a mark on her record, but yeah, it is what but, it is. Yeah, it is what it is. But I think that the only thing she has going for her, in my opinion, is that Donald Trump is the opponent, and he's the only other option. So you didn't like her when she was running like, against Barack in terms of a policy? and No, no. I, I, uh, I, I, in the beginning, because in the very beginning, I remember my dad. My dad was the first one to tell me he says that Barack Obama is going to win. Because in the beginning— My dad when, said the opposite. He said, I'm going to vote for Hillary. Yeah, but yeah. so I I said you know what Hillary's probably going to win because I was just yeah. of that ilk where I said I just don't believe that it was black. But then as it went on, I said okay, so I he changed the mind of the world exactly. So all that um, being said, to, to get back to my point is that it's like we know we're being lied to, and Hillary, in this regard, this was national secrets. It was it's more that, and I think that they do actually you know the Clintons. 
they have, you know, done some shady stuff. You know, but listen, what was shady about that? She was, was she, the FBI investigated it, and, and the result of the investigation not was that she was emails. not trying to do something nefarious. It's not the emails. I don't think the, the emails. What are you are referring so, to? I'm, I'm Benghazi? Thinking about, I'm thinking about a lot of. Okay, I'll put it like this. Yeah. Bill Clinton's speaking fees. Okay. Bill, are we talking about Bill Clinton or, no, no, or no, Hillary listen, Clinton? No, listen, 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 hear me out. I mean, he. No, no, hear me out. He you, should this, be able to this, get as much no, money this, as no, he possibly no, can. No, this will make sense, though. Okay. This makes sense. Bill Clinton's speaking fees. Right. Went up 40, 50 percent. Good for him. After Hillary became the Secretary of State. Also, the stuff that came out about Hillary. Is that um, is something wrong with that? Speaking fees going up? Think about it. Me, me and you both in business. Yeah. If my fees can go up, Let, I'm taking it. Hold on, hold on, no. you, I'm not looking think, for not, a reason to raise no, my prices. Yeah, yeah but you're not, you're not thinking about this on a, on a different level. Come with me. Take me. We both know that if we have an inside track, if it's something we want to get, a, yeah. a, a government contract, this and the other, if the guy we're going to see, we can get him and he has the ear of the person that can get us whatever contract we need, then, yeah, you pay a little bit extra. Yeah, I'll yeah. do that to get cozy up to the next thing. i do that now. That, exactly. That's the, that's the deal. That's exactly what – yeah, does it happen? Yes, yeah. it does happen. I mean, if Renee, if Renee runs for office, I'm raising all my prices. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, but the point is, is that it. Don't play if that that's line. what it is, then just say what it is. Don't yeah. try to lie and say that it's not that. Now, the point is, is that criminal? No, it's not criminal. For two, again, at the worst – I mean, but is that what we're judging her by is because he's raised his prices? No, that's one of that's one of a, quite a few things. Okay. That's one quite a few things. Then they bring into account the whole. See, the thing is, we can go and talk about the things that are wrong with her, and there's plenty wrong with her. It's plenty. But it's a difference between having a bad president, and she may not be a bad president. She may be a good president. Yeah, I think she I will. hope she will be. She has to be. Now, she better but be. there's a difference between having a, a bad president, if she's a bad president, and having a dangerous one. So, I, like I and said Trump again, with one. Hillary. And I respect Hillary. I respect her acumen. I respect her um, uh, her experience and everything she's done. Yeah, as do I. But but um, I think that the main reason I would vote for her is because my alternative is just it's just lesser of two evils. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> put her as evil. I would just put her as opportunist, which is nothing wrong with being an opportunist. But that does make you question motive yeah. and why you want power. But I do believe at the heart of it, if you really think about it, she's done stuff with the Children's Defense Fund. She's always done good deeds. But she also they also had this little thing. And the fact is, is that that's just what it is. So if she were running, if she were running against Colin Powell, I would I would choose Colin Powell. Yeah, I know you've said that before, but you know. But she's uh, yeah, not. So it, it is what what we have right now is, exactly. is is Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump. She's made some mistakes. He's made a lot of mistakes, and he hasn't even. I don't think his is his. mistakes. I think his is just oh, yeah. who he is. It's not with him. It's I think it's a deep yeah. character and personality character flaw. Yeah. flaw I think there's some mental instability there. Yeah, he too. has a, a a narcissistic personality. Yeah. He's just a different type of dude, and um. And also, when's the last time you've seen any major presidential candidate go around so much with a baseball cap on, making speeches? Uh, you know, I, never. I, I never. can't think of ever. No. I mean, he's not the guy. He's not the guy. Yeah. I mean, as soon as everyone realizes that, but I just hope everyone gets out and votes because if you don't, uh, we could be in, in, in for some to. real trouble. You have to. Now, you see what is happening over in Syria. Yeah, you see that little baby in the back uh, of the lim- in the uh, ambulance. Yeah, that, that, they uh, said that the kid is that five place. years old. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, this is the type of stuff that we have to deal with. There's, um, yeah, I think they're showing it on the screen now. Jarvis is showing, it, and that's heartbreaking for any. Yeah. If you have a heart, that affects you. See, but this is the the long and short of it is that stuff like this is happening all over the world. This is the side of war that people don't see on a regular basis, mm-hmm. which is why. You know, our leaders decide to go to war or not to go to war. I mean, they they really have to take into consideration images like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sons and daughters being killed. I mean, it's not just you know, ideally sitting back and and saying let's go into Syria. We should have gone into Syria. We drew the line. We should have mm-hmm. gone ahead. And, I mean, but I think from Obama's standpoint, having gone into Iraq, which destabilized the whole Middle East, big time, he had to make that decision. You know, America did not want to go into wars that. Mm-hmm. Um, f- that there was no clear benefit from from the war. I think we should really mind our own business sometimes, and 
and stay away from. I mean, if it's if it's saving human lives, if if, if it's uh, you know tragedies such as genocide, mm-hmm. okay, of course we should step in. But other than that, I mean, we shouldn't be so quick to invade another country. We made a big mistake going into Iraq. Iraq I mean, is is it's is almost in the books, unforgivable. Yeah. Un- almost unforgivable. I mean, yeah, that the, was, Iraq is the thing. Yeah. See now, if we take a, a purely isolationist stance and we don't do anything in other countries, um, then not that's purely. not good. We have so, the United so that means for like that. for him. Yeah. So, but Syria has devolved devolved into a a, a, a humanitarian crisis, and also remember what I told you before. Um, I think that lots of times we become involved in stuff because we want to keep our power uh, structure the way it is, the global power structure. And we do stuff so that other countries won't have to, so that other countries won't build up their arms or that something, you know, it's like we want to be the, uh, the, the, the muscle on the block. Yeah. We want to be the sole muscle on the block wherein, I can't remember, I think it was the Green Party candidate, I think her name is, her last name is uh, Stein, Julie yeah. Stein or something, Jill Stein, I believe in that. Well, yeah. she was saying something to the effect of, um, we have, I want to say, 70 military bases across the globe, and all the other countries have combined 40. Oh, really? Combined. Yeah, and it's and so if we have that type of president, that type of presence in other countries, um, we're not there just to you know chill out. We're there to show our muscle in times when we want to show our muscle. Also, I think one of the thing about us is that we're about the money in America. Everything's yeah. about money. It's here. about money. It's the oils, the natural resources. We we you know yeah. we need to make sure that we have access. And guess what? The defense industry. Once you shoot a bullet, you cannot. Use Stop that it. bullet again. No. That means somebody has to make another bullet. Turn. The defense industry and the defense contractors, with the money that they make and building weapons and building ammunition, it's good for economics. Building, it's good for economic. That's part of the manufacturing that we have in the United States. Exactly. You know, part of the manufacturing is around, you know, build, uh, um, uh, manufacturing firearms, manufacturing war weapons, yeah. because when they're used during the course of a war. They can only be used once, and then you have to order another one. Right, exactly. You know? And so I think that because of that, we're kind of dependent on that for economic development purposes and jobs and things of that sort. That also tends to make us, you know, not feel that bad about having to to become involved in other places. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, you know, we, there was some. Uh, I forgot the uh, the office when President Bush was in office. There was mm-hmm. a big uh, controversy over uh, Halliburton. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halliburton was a defense uh, uh, company, defense contract company. Yeah, exactly. So they made money on, on you know all the wars that we were in. So you know you're absolutely right. I mean, World War II, uh, the manufacturing of, of guns and tanks and bullets and you mm-hmm. know boosted the American economy. And um, you know, uh, I don't think we'll. Hopefully, I pray we never get to another world war, but uh, that was huge in terms of economic development. Okay. Now, um, last um, week, we mentioned a donor drive for um, a good friend of mine, Adam Kreef, and his yeah, how's that family. Going? We're still doing it. So it's, okay. stretch, it's it's a national effort now. And I don't know whether or not we have the, the graphic. Do you have the graphic for it? Okay. So... Um, there's going to be another donor drive in Manhattan at the Manhattan Sephardic Congregation, which is a, a, a temple, um, on August the 21st um, at 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. A Saturday, huh? Yeah. And I think on your screen it has the contact information. Sunday. Contact Victoria Minashai. Her number is 323-446-5506. And it also gives her um, email address as well. So Adam and his family are very, very dear to me. Um, his father, Robert, is like a big brother to him. He's from Israel. And um, they've always been close to me. And Adam uh, took ill very recently, just having you know, some back issues, and went in and found out that he has cancer. Wow. And now he, he is in need of a, a bone marrow transplant. And um, we're trying to find a match for them. I've done it. Uh, I've gone in, and all it is is a cotton swab. 
Just take a cotton swab. They'll send it in, and if you're a match, you'll get a call. And nowadays, to get a blood, a bone marrow transplant is very, very uh, 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 painless as opposed to how it used to be in the past. Mm -hmm. Now they can do it through the blood. So it's just like giving blood. So um, for our people in, in New, York New York City, please go out there. And if you're not a match for, for Adam, then you could be a match for someone else. But definitely go ahead and get it done. And, save a uh, life. And save, save a, a life. life. Save a life. And, uh, and Adam, we obviously, you know, brother, I love you, and, and we're, we're rooting for you. Get well soon, Adam. Yeah. So, um, so back to the uh, issue that we were talking about before. So with our man, Donald Trump, mm. if we think about 330-plus million people in this country, we have these two to choose from. Of these two is a no-brainer, Hillary. No-brainer, Hillary. She has experience. She has the competency. She has the uh, uh, the demeanor. It's historic. All of these good things. But I also, again, believe that the best thing she has going for her is the fact that um, Donald Trump is on the other end. But I also do, again, believe that some of the things that he's bringing to light, this popular stuff, uh, like the stuff he's talking about over the past couple of days about the inner city communities, if it were coming from anyone else, it would make a lot of sense. But, be is it c but because it's coming from this jerk who's already said some really jerk things in the past, then obviously we're not going to listen to it or take it with a grain of salt. No, and, it, and, uh, and he thinks he's got this big relationship with Putin over there in Germany, which, yeah. which by the way, is about to uh, is setting up to invade Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what we're going to do about that. I mean, and that's when we need someone in office that can handle that because that's a very sticky subject. Mm -hmm. You know, he already invaded Crimea, and now they're looking at invading uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we look at Donald Trump and, and, and how he uh, makes references um, to Putin as, you know, a guy he thinks he can deal with, um, I wonder how he would deal with that situation. So how do you think that should be dealt with? See, because if we take the isolationists and not get involved with all this other no, stuff, no, I don't. I, I think we just to uh, we need to uh, instill some uh, uh, some uh, what do you call it when you not an embargo but a uh, when you stop goods from shipping to another country. Yeah, but well, see, this uh, is the deal. I mean, because we already have that enacted now. What's the word? I'm, I'm uh, 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 not an embargo, a, um, like a, a tr some sort of trade restrictions. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, we have some in place right now, but we we need to hammer down and, and really. Uh, well, the thing is, this we can't do that with Russia. Well, we 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 already have. Well, we won't trade. See this thing: we won't trade with them, and we may try to force or strong arm some of our allies not to trade with them. Other NATO allies may not trade with them. But that same thing has been happening in Iran for a long time too, where we say you can't trade with them. But they get their stuff from Russia, and they get their stuff from China. They get there's other players on the block other than the United States. Yeah, so just because but we don't, it's do a it. United Nations decision. So President Obama went before the United Nations and, and got those uh, restrictions enacted. I can't believe I can't remember what the word. But you know, I don't think that I don't think that the United um, States can do that because Russia is a Security Council chair member of the United Nations. They can veto anything. So well, the United States didn't do it. President Obama just suggested. Okay, yeah. Or so made, he, the, made so, the point to the UN that since they're invading another country, mm -hmm. that we need to put these restrictions in place. But it won't happen. No, it already happened. That, well, that he suggested it or that it's happened that these— that But it happened as a result of them invading Crimea. Yeah, I would have to look into that a little bit more just yeah. because it's— So now I'm saying if they're looking at Ukraine and they do the same thing to Ukraine because he basically has his middle finger up to the U.N. Mm -hmm. and, and he's doing what he wants to do and expand well, his territory. Well, they're a permanent security council member, and so it's a lot of power that comes along with that. Yeah. And as a security council member, as a permanent member, that can, and I think it's only like seven or eight countries that are members of that, like the United States, China, Russia, France, Great Britain. But you have to have the blessing from the U.N. to be able to go and take over another uh, country and yeah, invade another country. That's why the United States had to make their case in front of the U.N. to mm -hmm. go into Iraq. Mm-hmm. And well, so, well, we made that that no, we wanted the help of the United Nations and the blessing of the United Nations right. to do and it. And the okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the economic sanctions that we economic can, sanctions, yeah, that's what I'm looking the for. The sanctions that we can put on to certain that helps for some countries, but it doesn't work for others. The thing that's hurting Russia more than anything is the low oil prices, the low global oil market. Because you got to remember how big Russia is. This, if you come from Eastern Russia. 
you look almost completely different from the people over in, you know, St. Petersburg or Moscow over there. You look complete because the people out in way out in eastern Russia look Chinese. They're, mm-hmm. they're damn near Chinese. Well, they're just taking over territory. So they're, no, no, no. They're it's just to... because geographically Russia is huge. Exactly. The eastern part of, of Russia is damn near in China. Close to Japan, it's very. And Remember, then, it was the USSR, which was. Yeah, uh, and before then, it yeah, was Russia. Yeah, yeah, it's still been the same last landmass for for right. years. But the point is this: is that, uh, and it was USSR when it was under communist rule. Now right. it's not. Right. Now it's under gangster rule. Right. But the point is, is that <laughs> to take care of such a huge territory, just think about how difficult that has to be, and when that, and so that means that. If you have that many people in such a large territory to be able to manage that and manage the infrastructure needs, you need your which your your greatest import is oil revenue. You need oil to be at a certain level so you can make enough money to do everything that has to be done to take care of this big house. Right, and and so we've restricted yeah. some of the purchasing of oil from other countries, which is part of the economic sanctions on mm-hmm. on uh, on these folks. So. Um, yeah, so they're feeling the pinch, and his mm-hmm. value went from I don't know one hundred went from ten billion to down to a billion. So he's he's feeling the personal pinch himself. But well, I just hope they do not yeah. invade Ukraine. One of my mothers at home wanted to tell us there was sanctions as well. Sanctions, thank sanctions, you, Mrs. Jones. Thank, thank you. you. That's thank the you. word I was yeah. looking for. Economic yeah. sanctions. Yeah. Oh, I got so, it. I got it. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, but it, it's interesting, and I don't. It, it's a scary time in the world. There's so many hot spots. There's so many things that are going on. Just about in every part of the globe, you have things going on. And we haven't even talked about terrorism. Yeah, which is happening yeah, ISIS, all over. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it's happening all over. And and so, of course, because of that, um, I don't think that Donald Trump should be. President. He can't. He can't handle the truth. No, I think that he can't handle. It. He can't. He can't handle it. Not only can he not handle the truth, but it's like you cannot depend on what's going to come out of his mouth. He can say something that can cause an international incident like none other. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And he <laughs> and he will. Yeah, I got this little this fly nat, and this nat or something. This is a guest on the it. show, mm-hmm. but uh, he's not going to be for it. very much longer. No, I'm going to get it. I get it. What if I caught it like a frog? That would be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, listen, um, there was something else to bring up. Oh, I wanted to bring up the floods in Louisiana. Oh man, can you believe that? What a devastating! Oh, and and now they're uh, getting on Obama because he hasn't gone down there. I think he should go. Well, okay. So this is what I understand mm-hmm. the, the the issue or the challenge to be if Obama goes down there. If Obama makes a trip, if 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 the leader of the free world goes down to this isolated area, you have to free up all the resources of the people who are rescuing folks. The police, the local police, and and government have to now focus on protecting him when he comes down. To, and stop rescuing because they're still looking for bodies right now. So once they get to the point where, you know, they're, they're not looking for any more bodies, things are, are settling down a little bit, then he can make his visit because they're going to need those resources down there. The cops are going to have to block off streets. They're going to keep people back and away and, and, and protect the president. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. This is why you're wrong. For one, um, it's nothing to the scale of what Katrina was. Katrina was much worse. I understand. And but at the same time, George W. Bush was getting a lot of flack about going to not going to Katrina for four days. Now, what could happen is that he can just go to the state of Louisiana and go somewhere nearby. He doesn't have to walk right into the hot spot. They can find ways logistically for him to be there to do it. And this is the thing to go. I think go that nearby. Huh? You said go nearby or go to I mean, the actual no, ground I mean, zero? He doesn't have to go to ground zero. He can go. The thing is this, is that we got to remember, I am very much so a President Obama supporter. I think he's the best president within my lifetime. But that doesn't mean he does everything right. And we got to we gotta get off that and think that he's done everything. About this thing, this thing specifically, he should go. And I guess he is going I, on Tuesday. He's on going t- Tuesday. And that's good. It's yeah. Tuesday. I give him enough time to find the bodies and to kind of secure things a little bit more. But well, now is not the time. You can't just rush in as the leader of the free world into well, an area. Well, the point is this, is that he is on vacation. And it's just the optics. The optics of if you have the, the, optics pe- on vacation, if you have the local if you have the local mayors, the local, if they can do a press conference, the mayor and the city manager and all the local people saying, where is the president, this and the other, they are obviously sitting somewhere where their feet are dry. The president can be right there no, no, no. with listen, dry feet listen, as well. You have to stop searching for bodies. Right now you can, be, you can rescue someone and save their Woody. life. 
listen, listen you listen, can do that listen to me resources are limited yeah. right because everything yeah. under yeah. is underwater so you have to look for bodies you got to get on these boats knock on these doors go mm-hmm. inside these buildings yeah. okay mm-hmm. or everybody can stop and guard the president okay so at the same time that being said it's the optics he can still do it you know everybody doesn't have to drop listen, what they're doing and be the, no the president I, will bring yeah. they will utilize every state resources and the federal resources, everything they got to do for a quick visit there in and out. And that's why I said, even if he just visited the state and went to a nearby city that wasn't as badly, floods happen where it's higher water in some places, lower water in other places that could be nearby. So let's just say the next town over that wasn't as affected, then he could go in there and have all the federal protection that he needs, say something quick, or can get on TV. Or, but the So point let me is, ask you this question. Yeah. If he shows up, will everything dry up? Will we say no. the same thing when if that was there, George W. Bush and Katrina? No, that's what I'm saying. We can't, we can't be like that. We got to where It's the same situation with George Bush and Katrina. You know, he can't just, the worst hurricane in U.S. history, he can't just pop in as the leader of the free world. First, you got to assess it. You got to figure out what's They're going on. They're doing that. He's already had his the right. Department of Homeland Security and all the, the various federal agencies yeah. that have to deal with catastrophes. They're already there. So it's not like he's not doing anything. Don't get me wrong. Hey, man. It's not that he's not doing anything. He has his people down there doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. What I'm saying is about the optics of the president being there. I that's understand. all I'm saying. Especially since they're showing video of him on the golf course. You know. Exactly. And so that's all I'm saying. I mean, it'd be tough the to optics of the president too. being there is important. He needs to show his face, and he's yeah, going to do gotta that be safe. Tuesday. It's got to be safe. So they're going to make sure it's yeah, safe. Well, that's yeah. a given. They're yeah. going to. They're not going to let the president go and just jump off in there and he be right. in swampy water. That's not going to happen. Yeah, but they're going to apply the resources necessary to make sure that he's safe. And right now, you those resources trying, you are needed. You keep sounding like you're trying to make to an excuse for him. people. Quit no, trying to make listen, an excuse for it. At first, I was like you, until I thought about it, mm-hmm. until I thought it through clearly, uh-huh. and I talked to some folks who've worked in his cabinet. And they said you can't just rush into the situation because you need these resources to find people. Okay. So we've got to let them do okay. some of that work. So before again, we go in. again, nobody said rush into the situation. Nobody yeah. said that. How for long two, has it been? A couple. For of, two, if you're talking to people in his cabinet, then of course they're going to toe the line. Yeah. So right. what I'm of saying course. is this. But it makes sense. That, yeah. What I'm saying is this. We were not saying that same thing. Nor should we have said that same thing when President Bush waited forever to go down to New Orleans. All I'm saying is that that we can't I don't really we, recall exactly what happened with that. I recall President Bush didn't go down to New Orleans for quite some time. I can't remember it was four days or five days. But even if he came and went nearby somewhere, and then he got so much pressure that he finally went. And remember, it was still New Orleans was still underwater. But where the president showed up, I think he showed up at the state house or something. He may have been in Baton Rouge or somewhere else near New Orleans. I do recall there was people. There was like live coverage of people stuck on freeways and masses at the Superdome. Exactly. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. um, I, I don't recall in terms of what was it a few days before he went down there, or how long was it before? He I went think down some there? of that stuff was still going on when he went down there. People yeah. were still in the so the stuff wasn't clean and dry when. How he long went. was it before he went to nine eleven down the ground zero? That's probably pretty much was very it faster. Soon, yeah. But things were different in 9-11. Yeah. 9-11 changed everything. Well, you know, they have to secure that too. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious to find out, like from a security the, standpoint, yeah, how well, that works. But again. That's an excuse, and it's an implausible excuse. Okay, why don't we just say this? The man's on vacation, man. Come on, man. You got, you got, you know, we got the one thing about us. The one thing about us here. The one thing about us here is that we will always remain. Everyone knows. Okay, everyone knows um, our my political slant, our political slant. But we have to always be objective, always, and we have to always keep those in power. We have to keep them. Um, uh, in a certain light. Right. Of course, yes. I, again, I believe that President Obama is the best president of my lifetime so so yeah, far. Yeah, I agree. But that doesn't mean he does everything right. And so we can't, for us as adults, for us as the voting public, for us as black people, because he's the first black, black president, we can't automatically think that and just automatically assume that everything he does is right. And that's fine because no president does everything hey, right. I think he's – go down there on Tuesday. The water had a chance to reside a little – recede a little bit. You can see more of the damage. I mm-hmm. think it's perfect timing. Get there on Tuesday. Do your thing. And have a good time on vacation, man. 
Next time, invite me. Woody, Woody, Woody. You, you, must be, you must be trying to get a suit from the president. He going to buy a suit from you. He might buy a suit from you. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just I, I would have, it almost happened, man. Hill Harper kind of blocked that a little bit. Hill. Yeah. I'm mad at you for that, brother. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get it. Yeah, but um, yeah, but don't don't get it twisted. He's, I mean, he's going to do that, and yeah. it's just that I think he should have done it sooner. So, you know, and being objective, you, you have to say, yeah, you should have done it sooner for this one. This one time, yeah, you dropped the ball. Is it something that's super duper catastrophic? It does it rise to the level of what President uh, Bush did with Katrina? No, but. Should he have done it sooner? Yeah, he should have done it sooner. It's just that know. simple. I don't so. know. I, I, I will have to just disagree on that one. I, I hear you. I know. I know you do, but it's okay. It. Yeah. It's okay. You got, maybe it's the Midwest in me. You remember, I, you know, I, I worked for Republican and Democratic administrations. I used to work for Kathleen Sebelius, who was President Obama's Health and Human Services Secretary. Right. And I worked for Sam Brownback, right. who was the governor of Kansas, who was a strict far-right Right. Damn near Tea Party conservative, but you're still it's wrong though. Not about this. About this, I'm right. <laughs> about this one thing, I'm right. That's for certain. Yeah. So listen, I. Right, um, what about uh, Javago? Yes, 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 yes. Before we sign off, I have to put in a word for my primary sponsor, Javago Watches. Javago. Fine watches, fine styles, and men's and women's fashions. Um, go to the website and check it out: www.javagowatches.com. Go and choose what style you like, and then go to Amazon and get it for a discount. That's what I would do. Great watches. I have one on with me now. It's my favorite watch. I have it on. Um, you don't have to show it, Jarvis. I was just about to do the Javago. wave in the air. Yeah. Also, I wanted to um, uh, also throw another shout out there for Nano Bright. Yes. Which is another one of our primary sponsors. We start using that next week. You need to start doing it. Go a hey, go to am uh, to nanobright dot com and get it. And then remember, use the promo word skin and you get ten dollars off and it's only like twenty bucks if you get it ten dollars off. And, it's and very buy affordable. and you gotta buy two. Yes, yeah, it's very affordable. Yeah. The thing is you gotta buy two because if you buy one and you see what it does for your skin, you're gonna be mad. You're gonna be mad you didn't get the you're other one. You're gonna be mad you didn't get the I've other been there one. Before. Because, yeah, exactly. So you should definitely get it. Especially at this time of year is out here in California, you know, a lot of people have sunspots and a lot of people just have hyperpigmentation because if you play basketball a lot like me or you get scratched, then it gets dark where it's scratched. And if you put this stuff on your whole face like lotion, I'm telling you, yeah. you'll love it. You'll or love it. Or if you're just it. ugly. Or if you're just ugly. Helps out <laughs> ugliness too. It will wipe all your ugliness it'll, away. It'll erase ugly? Yeah, it'll Damn. erase all the ugly on me. Man. All the ugly on me is gone. Thank you, Nana. No, it's still a little bit there, bro. It's a little bit there? Yeah. You can't really see it, though, with the I camera. I see it clearly. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in for um, this week's show. We always enjoy having you, and we're grateful yes. that you would start off your weekend with her, with us. I said with her. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking about with Hillary Clinton. I'm thinking about this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all her. Yeah. Yeah. I man. got that. Let me stop this little you Freudian mean. slip. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you got any words you want to plug in? Woody, what you working yeah, on? Yeah, man. I, well, shoot, dude. I just got back. Uh, well, you know, WoodyWilson.com. The finest bespoke clothing in the world, folks. Come check us out um, by appointment only, please. Just, please just don't show up. Uh, but other than that, man, listen, I'm glad to uh, to be back. And, uh, you know, the show's doing great, great numbers. And we're really looking for someone to send some music in because we need an opening uh, uh, for music. Yeah, right? absolutely. That's so true. Those folks who are in the music biz or listen, talented. Yeah, if you guys have a, an original song that you guys would like to um, submit to become our new intro song since we can't use National Anthem by Radiohead anymore. Um, email me, ronnie.fryerson at gmail.com. Put in the subject line, focus slash song or focus slash intro. And then uh, I'll take a listen to it and I'll let Woody and Jarvis listen to it. Yeah. You know, and you got to beat Jarvis too, because Jarvis is a music producer as well, and you oh, got to. Yeah, yeah. So Jarvis he has got a, a couple, discerning he's ear. Got some things too. So, so don't come in here with no whack stuff, because it, it'll be sent back to and you. John Sally, come on the show, man. I ran into John today, so he said yeah. he wanted to come on and talk politics. So I'll, we'll schedule that. All right, we're gonna have to uh, yeah. get this table raised or something. Cause John, yeah. John is a seven footer. I'm gonna need a stool. Sal, come on to the show. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Have Happy a great Friday. weekend. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And we'll see you next week on another edition of Folks of Ron Fryer. Don't drink and drive. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life. From Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com.